We recently ordered an off-road teardrop camp trailer from Bean Trailer Company. I need to build a carport or bean port for it. I'll be using cedar logs harvested from our forest. I like to start by sketching a practical and economical design. In this case, it's going to be a simple post and beam frame supporting a metal shed style roof. The beam port will be attached to an existing outbuilding. Three 10 inch diameter posts will support a 28 foot beam about 8 inches in diameter. The two corner posts will each have one diagonal support. The one midway post will have two diagonal supports. Each of these four diagonal supports will be about 6 inches in diameter. The distance from the existing wall is measured to establish the location of each post. A footing and pier are poured for each post. Anchor straps are added while the concrete is still loose. This is left to cure while I harvest and prepare the logs. We will be hunting western red cedar on our property at the Oregon coast. Other tree species will work, but cedar is preferred because it resists decay and is pleasant to work with. The best trees are straight, tall, and taper slowly. The strongest timber is from slow-growing trees that are often growing too close together. By selectively removing trees, we will be helping the remaining trees to grow larger and healthier, just like thinning seedlings in a garden. If we don't thin trees, many will die and thin themselves over time. This is obvious when looking at the spacing of trees in a mature forest. Spring is the best time for harvesting and peeling cedar trees. There's an abundance of fluid running from the roots up the tree in an active layer between the tree bark and the wood. This wet flow makes the bark very easy to peel from the wood and leaves a beautifully smooth finish. The bark can be left on, but this invites bugs and causes other problems. We can measure a tree's diameter and simply estimate the height. The 28 foot log for the beam will be hardest to find, so we'll look for it first. The diameter can be measured at eye level and then estimated about 28 feet up. It would be nice to find a log that tapers no more than a couple of inches from one end to the other. Once the tree is selected, we want to fall it so the top has a clear path through the neighboring trees. We also want the top to fall away from the direction that we plan to pull the tree towards. First we cut the face. There are a few types, but they all form an open gap that faces directly at the falling direction. The next cut is the back cut, or felling cut. It is made an inch or two above the deepest part of the face cut on the opposite side of the tree. Special attention must be given to any tree that is leaning. One or more wedges can be driven into the back cut as needed. A seemingly small wedge has amazing power and effect. You can literally watch it push a tree over as it is driven deeper into the back cut. For this to work, there must be a portion of uncut wood between the fall cut and the face cut. Without this holding wood, there's no hinge and the tree will fall out of control. Now that the tree is down, we can delimit and cut it roughly to length. The nearest end of the log can be lifted while skidding it out of the forest to the work site. The process is repeated for the post logs. The tops of these trees may be suitable for some or all of the diagonal supports, or a separate tree can be harvested. 
Now that we have our logs, we can begin peeling. Something like a wedge or hatchet blade can help start the peel. A piece three inch wide is a good start. Simply lift up on the bark. Don't pull it or fold it over. The bark should lift off the wood in long strips. The bare wood will be wet and slick. Keeping it clean now will pay off later. It's a good idea to let the peeled logs dry for a week or two. Regardless, the concrete work should cure for at least two weeks before it's subjected to weight or force. Depending on the circumstances, it may be a good idea to allow the logs to dry for several months. They will lose considerable water weight. Install the posts with a fat end down and standing straight up. We need a nice square cut at the base. A piece of felt roofing is used to provide a moisture barrier between the concrete and the wood. A few stakes and braces are used to hold each post securely in place. Now the post can be trimmed to a proper height. We need to subtract the diameter of the beam plus one and a half inches for a 2x4 that will set flat on top of the beam. We are using a front end loader to place this beam. A spar, pulley, and come along could also be used. For example, I installed this cross beam alone using ropes and rigging. Rafters will be supported by the beam. They all need to be the same height. To achieve this, each rafter can be custom notched. A simpler method is to add a 2x4 along the top of the beam. Wedges are used between this piece and the beam to create a flat level surface for attaching the rafters. Cedar poles can be used for the rafters, but using standard lumber simplifies things a lot. We are using metal ribbed roofing. There's no snow load here, so 2x6 rafters 3 feet apart topped with 2x4 purlins every 24 inches, will work fine. We do get winter winds up to 80 miles an hour, so close attention is paid to fastening, especially along the edges. I've constructed similar metal roof buildings that have held up well here for decades. I prefer the metal rib style roofing in most cases. Classic corrugated roofing is another option. It has a vintage look and may appear to be more economical, but the additional cost of wiggle board needs to be considered. The trickiest part of this construction is working with the unique uneven material. Joining logs is more of an art than joining common lumber. Cutting and installing post braces is a good example of this. I find it easiest to cut the notches, then lash the brace into position. In this position, the brace can be marked for cutting. The center of the face cut is marked. This mark is used for vertical orientation while the brace is being cut. Remove the brace and make the cuts. If you've never done this before, it's a good idea to practice on some scrap logs. When the cuts are finished, the braces should fit snugly into position. Lag bolts, screws, or spikes can be used to secure the connection. Perforated strapping can be used to secure the beam to the post. Cedar does not require a finish, but any outdoor wood can benefit from some type of sealant, especially at the exposed end grain. Sealing unseasoned end grain can help reduce cracks and checking. I made a sign to identify the new space and to act as a reminder of the height restriction. The Bean logo is for my personal use here with the kind blessing of the folks at Bean Trailers. That's it. Feel free to post questions. If you would like to be notified of our future videos, including our Bean Trailer update, click subscribe. I hope something here was helpful or at least interesting. Thanks for watching.